Dear Canada, Today I'm going to talk about the state of the bluefin tuna and Canada's position on the recently rejected UN ban on the exporting of this magnificent species. Atlantic bluefin tuna is one of the largest and fastest species of fish. They can grow as large as 2 meters long and weigh about 250 kilos each. Bluefin tuna are warm-blooded, which is extremely rare for a fish. They are a migratory species and can be found traveling as far north as Iceland and back to their southern Mediterranean spawning grounds several times in a single year. Oh, I forgot to mention, they are also regarded as highly delicious, which is obviously bad news for the species. In the 1970s, the prices for bluefin tuna rose drastically due to the large demand for the fish in Japan. Bluefin tuna can be sold for anywhere between 2,000 and 20,000 per fish, depending on the size and fat content of the fish. Bluefin tuna is the most costly fish on the market, and the financial gain and the high demand for the fish is obviously what has caused this species to be overfished for the past 40 years. The bluefin tuna population has dropped by 80% in the past four decades. We are now at a critical juncture for this beautiful and unique species. To learn more about how these fish are targeted using high-tech industrialized fishing methods, please follow the source links in the description. Now, most of this illegal overfishing of the bluefin tuna happens in European waters. In their warm spawning grounds where whole schools are targeted using illegal spotting planes and high-tech tracking equipment. This is not how Canada does it. Canada actually follows the quotas set in place by the International Commission for the Conservation of Atlantic Tunas. In Canada, there are 286 licensed bluefin tuna fishermen from PEI. Although Canada's fishermen have followed the regulations put in place for a sustainable fishery, it doesn't mean that the species isn't at risk. We are not the ones overfishing the species, but we are affected by the illegal fishing that is happening elsewhere. Remember, this is a migrating fish, and the severe overfishing takes place at their spawning grounds. Last week, March 18, 2010, 175 countries got together to vote on various issues concerning endangered species. Atlantic bluefin tuna was one of the species to be discussed at the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, also known as CITES. The proposal was to ban the exporting of Atlantic bluefin tuna until the species is no longer under threat of extinction. The EU, the US, Sweden, Norway, and Kenya all backed the proposal. Japan opposed the ban straight away. Japan imports 80% of the world's bluefin tuna, as much as half a million tons per year. Of course they're going to vote against the ban. Can you guess how Canada voted? Gail Shea, Minister of the DFO, sided with Japan and opposed the ban on bluefin tuna exports. Of course she did. Remember, Canada has 286 fishermen in her home province of PEI. She didn't want those poor men out of a job. Well, this, unfortunately, will mean the end of the species. We can thank Gail Shea for making those decisions for us. She would rather protect the jobs of 286 men from her province than protect an entire species that is well known for being overfished and is currently facing extinction. Her reasoning was simple. Canada's fishermen do it sustainably and follow the rules, so we're going to continue. This is what Gail Shea said when asked about the proposed ban. She said, If Canada ends up in a situation where bluefin tuna is listed, we will probably have more to lose than most other countries because we export almost all of our tuna. This was her statement when she learned that the ban was rejected. We're very encouraged by the preliminary results because Canada's position all along has been that this species should be managed through a regional fish management program which we have. But doesn't she understand that this is a migratory species? What happens in other parts of the world will affect the numbers of the bluefin here in Canada. All Gail Shea cares about is the economics of the fishery, not the actual state of the species at risk. This is just one example of the poor decision-making by our Department of Fisheries and Oceans. 
Please subscribe, Canada, because there is plenty more to be discussed. Gail has got to go. Thanks for listening, Canada. Have a great day.